Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome on this November 22nd. Good to see you all. Phil, good to see you, Mike, Grant, Deb. Good to see you all. Jack, Chuck, Bonnie, everybody. Welcome back for the last day of the week. Hopefully, we all know what to expect on a Friday. It means you get to go home early. <laughs> we know how Fridays work out, everyone. But let me tell you, it has been a fun, fun week. And let me tell you, we got a packed show right now. we got a bunch of stocks right now up. We got this EYEG up 86% already in pre-market. VIVE up 43%. You already traded a million two shares. Got a couple of nice little stocks, a couple of them getting crushed. And also a couple of really, really, really nice swing trades that we've been working on. So I'm going to check those out too. Uh, not just only on the Uber trade, but the uh, LK, um, LK also has been a really, really good swing trade also. We're going to check those out. But before we do that, everybody... Uh, let's go out there and just let me just remind everybody, next week, starting on Monday, uh, we are going to be starting the Phase 3 classes where you're going to be trading live with me. You already did Phase 1 and Phase 2. As you know, we do them every single month. So next month, they're going to start early because of the Christmas holidays uh, coming around the corner. So we're going to be doing Phase 3 next week, and then we'll start the new cycles the following month early. And then obviously, you know, we got Traders Talk, and, you know, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. So I think it's going to be a really busy couple of days up until Wednesday. And listen, I know everybody's all excited about Black Friday. You know, we're going to have a big, uh, you know, everybody's going to do their shopping and, you know, obviously come here at Cybertrain University and do some Black Friday shopping here too. But once again, uh, Fridays, I'm telling you, on, you know, half days, the day after Thanksgiving are actually pretty good damn days. Actually, it's probably the easiest days to trade. So listen, you're only trading up until one o'clock. So we have to lose, stick around. All right, so let's actually go back and talk about what happened yesterday because we really had a pretty good day yesterday. And, um, you know, listen, it's like the news, the news already out there. It's done with, you know, but we all know about the TD Ameritrade and the Schwab news, uh, you know, due to a somewhat of a Schwab trying to merge or even buy out TD Ameritrade. Stock did phenomenal. Doesn't look that good on that chart. Doesn't look good on that mm -hmm. intraday chart. And it right, looks better on this chart right here, right? Stock gapped up. There you go. Oh, not on that chart either. There we go. All right. So, yeah, stock gapped up pretty big. And you know what? This stock, if you remember, we talked about it when the stock got crushed, when it came out with the free tickets, and it went from 46 down to 34. You know, that was a great buying opportunity. Uh, everyone should be able to got into that swing trade around $36 a share. What's, and, I, and I said it, I, you go back and look at my YouTube channel, it says, you know, Team Ameritrade, you know, we don't do too many swing trades in here, but when we do, you know, there's a reason for it because we're good day traders. And, you know, as you're in here, you'll know why uh, to be, you know, when to do a swing trade versus when not to do it. You know, you know why we don't like to swing trade, right? We just want to basically, we basically just want to, you know, make our days pay and <laughs> like to sleep at night. But there are times and times we will do it, all right? But anyway, that stock took a big hit. I know some of you guys uh, did really well on the short on that trade uh, on both those stocks. So, you know, that was pretty decent. What else did pretty well also we had yesterday? We had a couple other ones too. We had that one. We had the CGC. Also had a nice little move. Yeah, well, uh, Susie, we'll fix that. Well, uh, it's going to be on Monday and Wednesday. I'll fix that on 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 the on the uh, slideshow. Monday and Wednesday is going to be class. Okay, sorry about that. So getting back to where we were at, uh, we had this stock right here that did pretty well yesterday. That stock had a huge run up. The CGC just went from eighteen eighty to twenty one. That was a pretty nice move. Crohn's also uh, taking a big back off now, but these edibles, you know, pot stocks. You know, all doing pretty well, except that T T R T R L Y. <laughs> but this one did really well. This one basically trades side by side with ACB. But now you can see it's backing off. ACB has been a really nice little push. Everyone did pretty well uh, on that. But uh, and then we had the H E X O. Also, that was really really nice. That was a nice little cheapy right there. You could see it right there at nine o'clock. Thing just went from two dollars to two seventy. I mean, a matter of an hour and a half. That was probably the easiest and best one that I liked as a trade. And obviously, this is a pretty good short right here. Some of you were able to get the short off. 
And that one did, uh, took a little big hit. All right, so that's what you guys missed yesterday. But don't worry about it. Today's a new day. That's what's great about trading. All right, so let's talk about what is moving this morning. How well did uh, e ETFC do? Well, that one took a big hit. That It didn't like the news at all. So that was the reason why, you know, more competition, you know, between uh, especially that's going to be one big superpower. Schwab is just an animal. I'll tell you, like some people underrate them, but I remember Schwab just buying, like buying CyberTrader at the time. Uh, they bought uh, op uh, Options Express. You know, you want to get in the option market, you know. They never wanted to buy me, though. Actually, let me tell you a funny story about Schwab. Uh, been doing this for 25 years, and Schwab came out with a uh, bought a company called CyberTrader, and they wanted to. And then I had CyberTrader University, and it was a big conflict. And I was doing events with them, and I had very good f relationship with a lot of guys from CyberTrader. And but Schwab, their attorneys were really ticked off at me, and they they were trying to do everything they can to sue me. They wanted, and I and all, I, and they couldn't because I owned the name first, and all I kept telling them. It's just buy me out. I'll take some stock. You know, it's not, I'm not like mad. I'm talking about, you know, what, what, they didn't. And you know what? They didn't want to buy it. They just did not want to buy it. I'm like, why? What's the big deal? I'll take, listen, I'll take 100,000 shares, you know, Schwab. They just didn't want to do it. But um, so anyway, make a long story short. The reason why they couldn't come after me is because. My brother, for some of you who don't know this, owned a company called. Everybody heard a company called Skinny Cow Ice Cream. Anybody heard of Skinny Cow? Okay, so my brother is the founder of the company, and he sold it to Nestle's for a gazillion dollars. But they had the same attorneys, so technically their attorneys can't sue you know a, a company that was partners of another another owned uh, subsidiary area. So they so I said so that that squashed that deal. So the only other option was the buyout. So anyway, they got rid of the uh, they got rid of the name. You know that, that that's what it turned out to be. So they couldn't really use the name anyway. That's why they just went to Schwab, went to Schwab. But uh, but that's the long story short. Anyway, let's get back to fun, right? Let's talk about what's moving this morning. So anyway, we got the Uber trade, and Uber has been doing pretty well on our swing trade right here. Stocks been doing up pretty nicely. Uh, I tell you the truth, I got lucky on the trade. I bought it. I was losing money. I averaged down, which I rarely ever do, and I own several thousand shares of it. Stock is doing pretty well for us, so it's doing pretty well in the swing trade. Another stock uh, that's doing pretty well is on the LK on the swing trade. That one is starting to build a little bit more of a, a Fausto flag on the long-term trade. It just broke all-time highs. So LK is doing really, really well also. That's a new IPO that just went public, so keep an eye on that one. And then also the CEI, everybody remembers this stock. The stock went, we traded it, stock got destroyed, went back up. It's all the way down here. Keep, I'm, I'm telling you, keep an eye on this stock. This stock might be a swing trade, you know? I mean, stock is just like, when's the last time you saw a stock go from 600 down to, you know, a dollar? Uh, I hate to be the guy that holds it, had that overnight. <laughs> just, you know, you know, you want to play around with expensive stocks. You know, that, that could happen. That could actually happen. All right, so one of the big stocks that a lot of you guys are focusing on is on the VIVE. Now, this stock I've been watching on the iceberg orders that keep going on. It was holding up pretty strong right here. But it just, I don't know what the news was, but the thing just took off and went from 250 all the way to 550 and came right back down. You could see not too long ago, the stock was a $100 stock. So um, stock up 30, 38%. If it holds support levels here, that would be good. But I'll be really careful on it. It's been really nasty on the swing trade uh, uh, on the intraday. EYEG is another one that's moving. At least this one's kind of holding right here, you know, right around the 850 price range. It is breaking 52 week high, so this one's doing pretty well. Spreads a little big, up 85 percent, 2.1 million shares. You got some decent orders on level three, a little bit more buyers and sellers. I like it what I'm seeing on level four. HIBB is another one that came up on my radar. The stock also up 23%, 80,000 shares. Uh, the spread is dangerous. Be careful on the spread. The spread, you can see, is 30 cents wide right now, you know, and you got to be a little more in advance. This is a stock that, you know, I did a class on spread trading. You always got to focus on spread trading. Um, NIO, NEO. So, anyway, this is like a, another, you know, stolen, you know, listen, you're hearing about how China is stealing intellectual property uh, of the United States and stuff like that. It's one of the big 
you know, uh, uh, U.S. And, and China wars that's going on, what Trump's trying to do with, you know, uh, with the trade deal. Listen, this is a copy of, um, this is a copy of uh, Tesla, okay? It's another copy of Tesla. You know, I was a fan of it when it went public. Thank God I didn't hold on to it because they got crushed. I lost money on this stock. Not that bad. I think I lost like maybe like a buck on this stock. Uh, I bought it. I owned it around nine. I sold it at eight. Look, and look where it ended up. Went down to a dollar. Listen, it's, let me explain something to you. And I say this all the time to all my traders. It's okay to lose money. Okay. It's not a bad thing. You know why? If you know why you lost, you're not going to do it again. Because I would rather lose a dollar on this trade than, you know, because uh, God forbid you own, forget about a thousand shares. Let's say you own 10,000 shares, right? And that's your whole account. And now it's worth a dollar, it's worth two bucks. You lost everything, okay? So remember, our job here at Cyber Trade University is not teach you how to make money, it's teach you how to stop losing it. The winners take care of themselves. Because you know what? There are a lot of stocks in here I want to show you that are going to be coming up, and you're going to be like, wow. Thank God you took a loss on this trade because if you didn't, look where you'd be today. And let me tell you, that is one of the biggest reasons why people get crushed in the market. PCTG is another one that came up on my radar. Look at this thing. Getting crushed right here. Stock went from $20 down to $15. She's starting to go up a little bit, which is pretty good. So it's got some resistance levels from after hours of yesterday. Got great iceberg orders out there that I'm seeing on level four. We'll keep an eye on that one. ORGO is another one that came up on my watch list. Another stock that got crushed down 15%. So anyway, this is what I'm talking about. Here's a stock. Look here in the long-term chart. $8 stock. Next day, goes down to seven. Next day, goes down to six. Okay, what do you do now? See, if you were a day trader, what you learn and what we teach you in class, and you know how to read what's going on, okay, You'll know you should have got out of the trade, you know, yesterday, okay? Maybe, like, in the middle of the day because you didn't look where you are today. So what do you do? You do probably what every other stockbroker is going to probably tell you. Oh, if you loved it at 8, you got to be drooling here at 5, average down. And guess who makes all the money? They do, okay? It's a sucker's bet. Another one, DAC. Remember this one? $12 stock. Next day, 11. Next day, 10. Next day, 9. When's enough's enough? Oh, next day, seven sixty. Oh, you're not done yet? Look where you're now, 560, okay? How's that working out for you? You could always buy, there's one thing I was always taught for my traders, okay? This is something that I was trained, and this is what you're going to learn in class. You can always buy it back cheaper. What's the big, just sell it. Oh, by the time I sell it, I pay the commission. Commission, if you're worrying about commissions, you're in the wrong business, Okay? You could just buy it back cheaper. That's all. If you notice in trading, when we trade and we, and we do this in phase three, I'd rather just sell it and buy it back. You hear me say in the trading room all day long, you know what? I take the money. I'm going to run because you see, even Josh, we were talking about it in trading. Remember all the time I come and say, hey, you can't go broke taking a profit. Guess what? How many times did we buy the stock, sell it, paid more for it, sold it, paid more for it? People are like, why don't you just hold on to it? Yeah. You know why? Because a look at DAC. That's why. Okay? PCTG. Last but not least, the stock getting crushed. Stock took a big hit from 20 down to 15. She's starting to go up a little bit. As long as she's not a pharmaceutical stock, we know they do make a little bit of comeback. So that one is doing pretty well. Jerry goes money management. Well, listen, Jerry, one of the biggest things that we train you in class, and you learn this in phase, in phase one and two, this is like the beginner classes. It's all about money management, okay? You don't want somebody who has a credit card spending problem, do you? You know, they keep, you, you know, they keep, you know, they keep just sw swiping and swiping and swiping, and they don't look at their checkbook? Yeah. You know, you know, you know the biggest, before I go, and we're going to get ready to train, because I don't know Mark is going to open up in less than, a little bit more than 10 minutes. Do you know, do you know that 80 to 90% of the people who win the lotto file bankruptcy? Think about that for a second. If you came into fifty or hundred million dollars, and here you are, somebody just makes about a thousand dollars a week, and you come into that much money, how in the hell do you file bankruptcy? If you don't believe me, ask Google or ask uh, Alexa. I'm actually let me ask let me ask Google right now. I got Google right here. Let me see. Let me see. Hey Google, how many people file bankruptcy 
that win the lotto. Did you guys hear? Did you hear that? I don't know if you guys heard that on my Google. This I was actually wrong. It was seventy percent. I don't know how they do that. You guys didn't hear that? Uh, anyway, you can ask Google when you get a chance. But um, but anyway, it's all about money management. It's all about money management, and trading is all about money management. And that's what you have to learn to be a good trader. If you, if, you, if you sit in class, you learn what we cover in class, you do your money management, you do great. Listen, there's a lot of great winners out there. We're doing great in trading. But you know what? We're not here to make, you know, $10, $20, $30 on a trade. I'd, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather, some people are like, oh, I made $5 over the course of the month. I, had, I talked to one student yesterday, and they're like, you know, my, I, I'm sick and tired of my, you know, my mutual fund guy's making, you know, he did pretty well for me. He made me about, you know, 15, 20% last year. Well, how about, you know how much money he, if he made 20%, you know how much money you made? How about you, how about, you know, you making 5% a day? Add that over the course of the year between winners and losers. You do the math, okay? Who's, who's ripping off who? That's why we love what we do. Guys, listen, it's Friday. Don't get too cocky. Don't get too greedy. Make your money, take your profit, make your days pay. We know how Fridays end up, even though a couple of Fridays have been pretty good so far. But we're going into a big holiday week, biggest traveling day, a traveling day of the year. Kids are going to come back from college, you know, um, from school. So let's be a little careful out there, right, guys? So uh, let's go out there, and uh, if you see something, say something. Everybody here that are new members, new, new cyber traders, hopefully you guys have been enjoying it. Hopefully you've been uh, – I know I have a, a bunch you're going to be talking to today. Hopefully you learned a lot, and uh, – Hopefully, we can make you all students of ours. But remember, not all of you guys qualify to be part of Cybertree University. Just don't, don't take that in a bad way. It's just, you know what? You're going to do it. You do it right. You're not going to do it right, and you shouldn't do this at all. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading. We'll see you back at 2.30. We'll start commentating in about another 10 minutes.